So, originally, I set out to make a song in Desmos, kind of like how other people have done so already. But then I realized it's kind of <laughs> kind of <laughs> boring and tiresome. So, uh, I mean, a lot of ways I've seen other people do it elsewhere is with the use of, like, lists of numbers that you have to, like, manually click to progress the chord progression, which I don't really like at all. I would much rather it just be like a DAW where you can just press play and it does everything for you. And so rather than make a full song, I set out to innovate and create like a generalized way to play any song you want with arbitrary control in just one button. And so what I have set up here is I have a bunch of functions, each one of them... How do I even explain this? I promise it's not that hard to explain. Uh, each one of them is one like melody line and so i have six of them here i have one for the melody and then five more that are for harmony and these functions i know they have a bunch of scary numbers and stuff but they just encode the information of like uh what value of what will be played when that's all it is and so if i play it why aren't you making a noise oh And so I like this because not only is it just one button press to play your song, but it also only uses continuous functions. It's okay to use other things, but like, since this is Desmos, for me it makes it a lot less fun if you're just like typing notes into points or lists play notes, instead of having some kind of math to encode the information. Additionally, and if you've seen a lot of my videos in the past, I do this thing where I make the tempo change throughout the song, that way I can like make it sound a little bit more like a IRL performance, and this is something that you can do with this method. Right now I only have the time playing like linearly, since there's nothing happening to the parameter A, but I can introduce some tempo automation by feeding A into a function that describes how tempo changes over time. And so you're probably wondering how this works, but uh, <laughs> don't worry about it, it's a mystery since I am too tired to explain. Alright, me from the future here, I decided I would try and explain it. So, on that graph, we had two dimensions. One dimension was time, and the other dimension was frequency. And so... Uh, how do I explain this? I think the best way to think about it is that we had a bunch of notes that were at certain times and certain frequencies, and that's kind of it. And so what we want is a way to connect the dots continuously using some kind of function that's hopefully continuous. And it turns out there's actually a pretty easy way to do this, or like a known way to do it, I guess. So, uh, hmm, how to explain this? If we have two dots and we want to connect them, it only takes a line, that's it. And so in math land, that would just be like y equals mx plus b, you know that stuff x plus b, and that's a degree one polynomial because there's a invisible one right there. But if we had three dots, we can no longer use one line to connect them. And so we need a curvy line. Okay, you know what, I give up. So uh, this is no longer degree one. This is a quadratic, which means that it's going to be like uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. And it would take that form, we just don't know what A, B, and C are just yet. But this pattern actually continues, where if you have a certain amount of dots and you want to connect it with like a polynomial, it only takes one minus the amount of dots as your degree of polynomial to like uniquely have an equation for it. So in this case it would be a, uh, what are they called? Dude, I should know this. The three one. So it will be like... AX cubed, oh, cubic, that's what it's called. Plus B, I don't know why I didn't know that. Uh, two CX plus D. And we don't, we, again, we don't know what these are, but this would determine what our line is, or like the shape of it. And so now that we have that, we just need a way to figure out uh, what those A, B, C, and D, and all of those values are. Because like, in my example, or not my example, in Desmos, 
there was a lot of dots. There was more than just like three. It was one for every note. And so our equation is going to be some crazy thing with like, uh, I don't know, A to the N because we don't know how much it, it could be like 36 plus dot, dot, dot. And then plus, I don't know, <laughs> some letter uh, x to the nothing, and then just some constant. And so there's like a lot of unknown terms here that we don't know. And we need a, like a solid way of figuring out what those are all the time. And it turns out, OK, I just need to use an eraser. I don't know why I didn't do that. Uh, it turns out that there's a pretty good way to do this, but hmm. I think I'll make a cut because I don't know what the best way to explain this is. You know what? We'll just power through it. You know, the retention is going to be so bad on this video anyways because it's just like it's turned into a math tutorial. So who cares? All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm back and I thought of an OK way to explain it. So uh, let's just quickly come up with some random points. Three, one, two, three, and I'll just do it like this. So we have one, one, that's the first one. We have two, three, and then we'll also have three, two. And so the thing is, uh, we want a smooth function that'll connect these things, and we know it's going to be a quadratic from the thing that we talked about earlier. So we already know it's going to look like, I'll just say y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The only issue is that we don't know what this a, b, and c are, but we can actually find out by plugging these in and kind of like solving it like a puzzle. So I'll just do that for, for uh, all three of these. So y, that's going to be 1 equals to ax squared. If we're doing this one, 1 squared is 1, so it doesn't matter, plus b, x is still 1, plus c. The next one would be 3 equals to 4a, because 2 squared is 4, plus 2b, plus c. And for the last one, it would be 2 equals to 9a, because this time this guy becomes a 9, plus 3b, plus c. <clears throat> and so now we have these three equations. and. It might seem like we've made this even harder for ourselves. This is way too big. That's way too small. That's whatever, okay. It might seem like we've made this even harder for ourselves, but uh, we just made it so we're able to solve it. And that's because if we have three unknown variables in an equation, as long as we have three equations, we can figure out what those variables are. and. In school, these are called systems of equations. I think they're first taught with just like two of them, but uh, it still works with three. So it's going to take me a bit to solve because I don't really want to do it by hand. So I'm just going to I'm just going to do another cut, and I'll come back with the answers for this. Okay, I'm back, and it turns out that the answers are it's going to be negative three over two. 13 over 2 and negative 4. And so we can check this as well because I'll just bring up Desmos again. And so I have our equation here. And if we throw in our numbers, so negative 3 over 2. This video is going to have such bad retention. It's just turned into like a math tutorial. It's awful. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> divided by 2. And then there's the other guy, which is negative 4. And if we do that, we'll see we just have a line that goes through our points, just as we wanted. And so, yeah, go away. And so that's how we can do this. And the thing is, uh, this just keeps on holding, where if I had like 40 points, I could do the same thing. I would just have 40 equations. And so... The thing is, that kind of sucks. Nobody really wants to do a system of equations of, of like size 40. And people actually don't do them because we have this thing that's taught later on in matrix algebra where you just have a bunch of equations 
And the nice thing is that when you have everything in a matrix, it's really, really easy to solve. And not only that, but we have like really easy algorithms that you can just implement, which will do it for you as well. And so, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I did here, where I just had like 40 notes, size 40 matrix, and then you solve that matrix. And then it tells you everything you need and all the weights for all the, uh, the different terms inside the equation. And so that's how it works. Yeah. I'm honestly so surprised that you stuck with this video. It's like by far not even the most boring thing on my channel. It's probably like one of the most boring things in general, like in human history. Honestly, very impressed.